Here is everything you need to know about increasing visual quality and reducing input lag without losing too much performance. I will also go over what settings I changed to make the game more enjoyable. And later in the video, I will show a script that makes your game go from this to this, but more on that later. But before we launch the game, just make sure that you have your Windows and your graphic card drivers up to date. It kinda goes without saying, but the fewer programs that you have running in the background, the smoother the game will run. So turn off stuff that you don't need, and in my opinion, this includes the Battle.net launcher. So click on settings and set it to close completely when we launch a game. Most if not all performance related settings are dependent on what hardware you have. So keep in mind that you might have to adjust some settings for your setup and preference. I will also add Blizzard's system recommendations in the description if you are interested in comparing. There are a lot of settings, so let's jump into it. We start off with the graphics since these have the biggest impact on performance. Vertical sync should be disabled unless you are experiencing a lot of screen tearing. Set low latency mode to built in unless you have an uh, NVIDIA graphics card, in which case you can use the NVIDIA Reflex Plus Boost. Technically, this only reduces input lag, which is the delay between your mouse or your keyboard's commands and the game's response. So enabling this will make your PC work harder, which might make it more difficult to achieve your desired FPS if you really want to play on high FPS. But if your PC can handle the higher workload and you still can play with this enabled, I just uh, I would leave it on enabled. These settings are very demanding, but if you want to get uh, rid of jagged edges, you can try and uh, set them to these settings. I would probably just leave them off since the difference in actual gameplay isn't that big. These settings will be dependent on your hardware. My setup is fairly average and these are the settings that I have found to give the best balance between appearance and the performance. So set shadow quality to good, uh, since if you go lower uh, it will actually make some shadows uh, disappear completely and uh, the higher ones uh, doesn't really do that much. Liquid quality can be set to good uh, since it gets the new water visuals which just makes the game feel more modern without uh, being too demanding. Particle density should be set to high or ultra as this affects the details of spells like fire and dust effects and it's useful for uh, clearly seeing dungeon and read mechanics. These three have very little visual impact so I recommend setting this all to low. Outline mo mode on the other hand is very useful and should be set to ultra making clickable items more visible especially in crowded areas. Text resolution should be set to the highest option. It doesn't uh, significantly affect the performance and it uh, makes a huge difference for the actual appearance on textures. Spell density is a matter of personal preference. It filters out other player's spells, so if you want to see every spell that every player casts, set it on ultra. But personally I have it set to essential, which only shows uh, important spells like Demon Hunter Darkness or Death Knight's uh, anti-magic zone. Seeing all these spells can uh, clutter up the screen, especially during raids, uh, which uh, can make it harder to see uh, important mechanics. You can set it to whatever you want, but avoid using dynamic since it will change during combat and uh, it can be very demanding on your PC. Projected textures uh, should always be enabled. This setting controls the visibility of certain spells, for example swirlies from dungeon and raid mechanics. View distance, environmental detail and uh, ground clutter have a large impact on performance but they also enhance the overall gaming experience. I have found that settings around 8 is a good balance, setting it to 10 doesn't add much and lowering further doesn't improve performance significantly. Disable the triple buffering. Enabling this option will boost your overall FPS by a small amount but it will also increase your input lag which I don't think is a worth the trade-off. Set the text filtering to 16x. Ray tracing should be disabled. Ambient occlusion type should be set to Fidelity FX CA CAO. Resample quality should be set to Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0. DRS mode can be set to standard if it's uh, not too demanding for your PC. And for the graphics API, I would use uh, DirectX 12 unless you have an older GPU, which in case DirectX 11 might be better. 
physical interaction should be set to uh, player only unless your PC can handle both player and NPC interactions. This uh, setting is more about immersion rather than visual clarity. I like to cap my FPS because I don't really see the, the point of running more FPS than my monitor can display. So I recommend setting the FPS cap to match your monitor's uh, refresh rate. Disabling background FPS and target FPS. And now to the script that I mentioned before. If you type this command in your uh, in-game chat, it will make the game look significantly better. This script was created by Blizzard to help older PCs to achieve sharper visuals without losing performance. You can also adjust the slider here to control the intensity of the effect. I prefer to have it on 0.4. The game is also too dark for my liking so I have the contrast set to 60%, the brightness left at 50 and the gamma increased to 1.3 or 1.4. Adjusting these won't affect performance and it's a purely personal preference. The audio settings are somewhat less important and the impact on performance is very minimal. You can try and play without reverb sound to see if it's uh, something that you miss. Reverb sound can best be described as an echo or a lingering effect from nearby sounds. When it's enabled, sounds have a bit more depth or weight to it, but the difference is very minor so I recommend leaving it off. Under network, make sure to check the option for advanced combat logging. This helps provide more accurate data for add-ons and combat logs, such as when using Raider.io or analyzing logs on websites like Warcraft logs. While it mentions that enabling this may cause additional lag, I have never experienced uh, any issues. So most of this is uh, personal preference and uh, this is just the changes that I like to make from the default settings. So starting off under gameplay controls here. I like to enable outloot since um, bank space isn't a problem anymore and you don't really want to miss out on potentially missing something important. If you are using multiple monitors, make sure to lock your cursor to, to the window so you don't accidentally go over and click on stuff. I have also lowered the mouse look speed to 3 from, down from 5 so I have more control when I adjust the camera. And the same goes for auto follow speed. I have also set the camera following style to never adjust camera so I have full control over it and it doesn't move when I move my character. I have also enabled the water collision, so the surface acts like a, like a roof, which just makes uh, swimming a bit less annoying. I might have an unpopular opinion about the, the name settings. It's purely subjective and it doesn't really matter, but I like to play without my names showing over my character. But I also remove all the names of all the NPCs, even enemy players. I just think that the, the game looks way better without all the names floating. Quest marks and other interactions still work as they normally do, and the enemy players' names will be replaced by nameless when they get close enough, so it's no, not really a difference uh, anyway. Enabling always show nameplates is a must. With the default settings, the nameplates are only shown in combat. Just enable this so you are aware of your surroundings at all times. It's also important to check enemy minions and minors since uh, ads from dungeon bosses and raid bosses are included uh, in these options. Motion type should also be set to stacking instead of overlapping. It just makes everything easier to see and this way you actually have a chance to see what mob is casting what spell. Under display you can disable adventure guide alerts and tutorials unless you are a newer player that actually reads them. In game navigation is the arrow that points towards your tracked objects. I like to play with this on since it can help you find stuff uh, faster without having to look at the minimap all the time. I like to hide warband quests and low level quests just to keep things clean. If you aren't using an add-on for your party and raid frames, I would highly recommend using raid style party frames instead of the standard party frames. Uh, you find this option under Blizzard's own edit mode by right clicking on the frames right here. I also like to show the buffs on the frame, but only the dispellable ones. And the reason for using raid frames instead of the standard party frames uh, is just that it is easier to read at a glance. Under action bars, enable show numbers for cooldowns. This just makes the cooldown appear for set ability, which is just so much easier to read than the default settings. You should also enable lock action bars, so you don't accidentally remove something from your action bars. 
about the player resource display, if you are playing with the standard unit frames, I think that having this enabled could be a good idea. It's this frame right here, which appears in combat or when you cast a spell. It basically fills the same value as weak auras, but are way more restricted. You can choose which spells you want to track or change the appearance, like you can with weak auras. But it's better than nothing and it can work as an introduction to weak auras. Loss of control alerts. This puts a big icon on your screen when you get the CC'd. It can be very useful if you're doing a dungeon for the first time and you don't really know what's going on. I play with this off, but it's mostly because it clips through uh, other add-ons sometimes. I also set spell opacity to 0%. It's nothing wrong with the standard textures. I just think that they are too big, so I usually create weak auras uh, for the same effect. The only two things that I would change here are the logging notifications. It might be annoying if you have a lot of friends that are just uh, logging in and out all the time. I also like to disable guild member alerts so I don't get an uh, alert or sound cue when a guild member is going offline or online. The other thing is the chat filter. If you don't want to see occasional bad words, leave this enabled. I would also set sensor messages to no one if you are typing in uh, multiple languages. And the reason for that is that some words might be filtered out if uh, they mean something bad in uh, English. I would also change new whispers to be displayed uh, in a new tab so you don't accidentally miss it. The ping system is a newer feature that Blizzard introduced in uh, Dragonflight. It basically brings awareness to the pinged area which honestly can be kind of hard to understand sometimes. But at least now you are aware and you might see a cost that isn't being interrupted or a patrol that is coming kind of close. It takes some time to get used to but it's worth it. You can easily tell that the communication is more clear within the group if someone is good at pinging. I personally have it bound on the, the mouse scroll wheel pushdown. Under accessibility I like to set the camera shake to none. This will make it so the camera won't shake in certain story scenarios or when you walk past a giant. I also play with the sky riding effects disabled. It's less clutter on the screen which makes things easier to see while riding. I think that that is everything. Let me know if you found this useful or if you have any questions. If you want to see more of my in-game setup, you should check out these videos. See ya!